Welcome to Mormon Book Reviews, where an evangelical encounters the restoration. I'm your host, Stephen Peinecker, and this is actually, and you see the MMR logo in the background. That means it's a Mormon Media Reviews segment here on MBR, in which we discuss anything that's a non-book related media. In this case, it's social media. Uh, but before we get started, I just want to remind those of you who'd like to support the channel, check out our merch store, mormonbookreviews.com, where we have hot chocolate mugs and hats and all sorts of things. That will be a link in the description there. And uh, actually, uh, I just wanted to introduce two people that you're probably not too familiar with unless you're in, uh, in Facebook and in this group. Uh, so about a month or so ago, a couple months ago, I don't know, it hasn't been that long, uh, someone that reached out to me wanting to start up something called the Utah Interfaith Forum and asked that I would be a mod. Now, of course, my time, I'm not a full-time mod or anything like that, but I've been able to chime in now and then with advice. And there's this group called the Utah Interfaith Forum. And last week I reached out to the group and said, hey, why don't we have some representatives from this group? Now, this is the Utah Interfaith Forum on Facebook. It's a private group. I will leave a link in the description. Uh, so for those of you who'd be interested in joining, now they do have certain questions uh, questions that they want you to answer. So make sure you answer the questions if you're interested in joining the group. And what this is, is for people of all faith traditions, a place where they can come and have civil conversations and discourse. It's a non-proselytizing forum. It's a place not to go and say, well, my, my God can beat up your God or my religion's better than yours. It's a place for people to come and have uh, conversations. And so it's a non-proselytizing group. And I'm really, uh, I'm really happy with the progress the group has made. It's grown tremendously. It's got over 600 members. And a lot of my friends are in the group and are participating in it. And I thought I wanted to uh, share this with my broader audience, for those of you who are on Facebook and are not familiar with it. And so two of the mods have agreed to come onto this program to talk about it. Greg Woodhouse and Diane Schaefer, welcome to the program. Thank you. Thank you. So uh, I, I found this, you know, and it's interesting because, you know, I, I was involved in this early on, you know, when the group first got started. And of course, I'm involved in the conversations that had to take place, um, you know, and of course, whenever a group gets started, people are kind of trying to figure out what, is, what are we, how, what kind of group are we going to have? What kind of conversations do we want to have on here? There's trial and error. Uh, maybe some people in the group are not a good fit. Um, but as the group grow, grow, has grown, I think it's kind of gained some momentum and maybe an identity. Greg, what would you say is like one of the most important things about the Utah Interfaith Forum or one of the thing, most important contributions that it's making to having these conversations? Well, I think that the most important thing is helping people to understand and respect other faith traditions. The scholar Christer Stendhal uh, wrote about what he called holy envy, which is what I really would like to encourage that when we read about uh, Buddhism or Islam, we can see things in those faith traditions that inspire us or help us to maybe understand our own tradition more deeply. Yeah, yeah, holy envy. I really appreciate that idea. And, you know, Diane, I think what, you know, one of the things too is um, one of the things about the group is that, of course, it's Utah Interfaith Forum. So what is that? It's largely going to be kind of through a, a Mormon prism because it's a largely Latter-day Saint audience that's going to be there, or people in Utah that interact with Latter-day Saints who may be of a different faith tradition. And of course, people outside of Utah are, of course, invited in this group. I'm from Florida myself. But it's so so it's interfaith from the perspective of a Latter-day Saint tradition. And it's not only interfaith as in other religions, whether it's engaging Buddhism, Islam, or evangelical Christianity, or Catholicism, or whatever, but it's also interfaith in the sense that you're having a conversation with other branches within the Restoration. I think that's kind of like a twofold thing that we want to see here. We want to have conversations with the community of Christ, Church of Jesus Christ, uh, independent Restorationists, all these, you know, even polygamous groups, all these people that want to bring something to the table. Uh, maybe talk a little bit about that, Diane. Yeah, so... Um... <clears throat> It's it's a forum where we can talk about different aspects of the restoration. Um, a lot of the founding of the restoration, the basic principles are believing in Joseph Smith and in the Book of Mormon. And then um, other groups like Community of Christ, they have their own Doctrine and Covenants. Um, the Church of Jesus Christ, the Bicker Tonights, they just have Book of Mormon and the Bible. Um, 
And then there are lots of different ones. Um, like you mentioned, independent ones. Um, they they just believe in different things. There are ones that believe in polygamy and um, I don't know, they have additional scriptures. Um, there's a sealed book of Mormon that came out one year and um, it's just, um, it's a good place to interact with those people too, um, to get to know them better and respect them also. Yeah. And I think that's the most important thing is I think, I think my channel was made for your group or vice versa. I think it fits really well with what I'm trying to do now. My, my thing is, <laughs> excuse me, I'm not here to, to proselytize. I'm here. The purpose of my channel and people early on were suspicious of me. You know, they thought maybe I was a wolf in sheep's clothing that maybe I had an agenda that I'm this evangelical and uh, actually, uh, I had the Paul brothers of the Stick of Joseph told me, they said, no, see, Steve, you're a sheep in wolves clothing, you know, <laughs> being an evangelical. <laughs> and, 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 but this is the thing is now that I've been doing this for a couple of years now, people understand what it's all about. And it's to have adult conversations with people that have different views. And Greg, you know, maybe talk about some of the conversations that are going on in the group. Well, Let's uh, see, where do I begin? <laughs> We've had uh, a discussion going on about proselytizing because uh, there are, are a lot of people from, especially from kind of fundamentalist traditions that really feel a need to proselytize. We've had discussions about uh, about some of the basic tenets of uh, of Buddhism, of uh, Christian mysticism. It's really very wide ranging. Yeah, it is. It is, and uh, you know, I think that I understand the impulse for people to want to proselytize if that's foundational to their faith tradition. So <clears throat> it's this balance we got to have to have because like I come from evangelical evangelize, right? That's, that's the, right. So, that's the name. you know, it's trying to find that balance between being respectful of somebody who's trying to proselytize, but also try to show them model the right behavior and how one can do it, not to try to proselytize, but to have a sincere conversation with a person from another faith without then you, the, but the only point of you having the conversation is that you want to show that they're wrong and that you're going to try to convert them. That's the wrong spirit to have. I think that if people truly are out there to proselytize, they need to, before they do that, they need to listen and actually hear what other people have to say and, and, and gain some empathy for people and, 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 and understand where they're coming from. I think you'll go, it goes a much further, longer way that instead of proselytizing, it's about relational, it's relationship, building relationships. And then that to me is more important. And I actually think that, I don't think Jesus wanted us to go around and try to hit people over the head with the Bible. I think he wanted us to love our neighbors and 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 just do basic you know golden rule stuff when it comes to people that are different than us. What do you what do you think? Yeah, about you're this? pretty clear about that. Yeah, I think so too, Greg. And I think that people have kind of distorted Christ Christ's message as a result of that. And I'm not trying to I'm not going after people who are sincere in their faith. I get that too. If you really really do believe that your one way your church way is the one true way, and if you don't follow it, you're going to hell. I understand why somebody would have that the uh, compassion or they be passionate in that they'd want to do that. So I can understand. What do you think about that, Diane? Um, yeah, I, I understand it. Um, also in the sense that um, I was being educated um, by a church group that I didn't know who they were for a while. And then I found out and then I looked more into it. And then I kind of went through a faith crisis with it and, I kind of came back to a better reality, but um, I guess I can kind of see it from different angles um, besides being raised in the religion that I've been in, um, how it looks from the outside to be preached to mm. or to be told that, okay, now you know that you're the only one. Um, it can make you feel special, but it can also be degrading. So. I think we have to be careful about how we approach other people with our faith. 
I think that's so, I think that that is really true. And I, you know, I'm actually reminded of a phrase of a, I know this is probably a paraphrase, but I heard this a, while, a long time ago. And I've always kind of been my mantra. It's a Buddhist uh, phrase. And that is um, true, true religion is a right relationship with reality. And I think that that's the key thing is to, to not, to get caught up in all these other th these things or these ideas and ideologies and stuff like that and get that in the way of reality or relationship with other people. And this is the other thing too. There are plenty of other groups. You can, if you want to be proselytized, you, you, you can go anywhere and get proselytized. That's, that, that's easy. You can find that. But if you want to actually mm -hmm. set that aside and say, well, instead, let us actually learn from each other. Let us maybe see the good in the other. And, and, you know, even God showed me early on when I first started the channel, he said, when you see that person across the street, you're on one side of the street, you're holding your protest sign. And the person on the other side of the street, they're holding their protest sign against you. Just remember that person on the other side is a fellow image bearer and approach them that way as a fellow image bearer, because we all are brothers and sisters in one sense. And I think that's an important approach to take. What, what do you think about that, Greg? Well, when you were um, talking about it, I been kind of running through my head how can I uh, use the message of developing greater empathy when talking to other people because I think that's something that can really resonate with uh, people from a lot of traditions and it's really important for us all as human beings to Agreed. Yeah, wise words. Now, I wanted to ask both of you your backgrounds. Were what churches were you raised in, and wh where are you at on your faith journey? If if you don't mind discussing that, Diane or Greg. Yeah, uh, I'll go ahead. Um, so I am um, a Latter Day Saint or member of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter Day Saints. Um, I was born and raised that way, and I also have pioneers going back on my mom's side um so i have a lot of history um with the lds church okay and what about you greg well i'm the same i uh grew up in the lds church still still there uh not very active right now but i have pioneer ancestors on well, both sides of my family, going back to the earliest days of the church. So I wanted to show briefly the group. It's here. Let me just pull this up. So it's the Utah Interfaith Forum. Everyone is welcome here. And just check this out. So if you go, it's a private group. And then when you when you go to ask to request to, to join, you're going to be asked uh, some questions. And if you agree to those, uh, to some of the rules of the group, then you will be uh, in, you'll be a member of this group. Now I'm just curious to for both of you, um, since you've engaged maybe other faith traditions, whether it was before you started the forum or even while you're in the forum, is there something that maybe both of you could share? And I'm going to ask Diane first, and then Greg, why don't you uh, chime in? Diane, is there something that you've learned about yourself or other faith traditions in your journey, and how has that informed your faith walk? Um. Yeah, so what I've learned is I think everyone is trying to find a sense of fulfillment and um, also some kind of divine source um, that they can connect with and that they can share that with others so that we can connect as human beings. Okay, yeah, that's a universal principle, I'd say. What about you, Greg? Well, I think about prayer. It, uh, growing up LDS, I was taught to pray a certain way. And I remember attending a very conservative or orthodox uh, synagogue and listening to the prayers there really made a deep impression on me. Uh, I, uh, it was all about offering, offering praise to God and 
it was uh, and and if it were desires desires for the community and I've also attended Catholic and Episcopalian services and all of them have kind of taught me a little bit more about prayer which has been a really important part of my faith journey yeah you know and that's the thing I was thinking about now, of course I was like I don't know if you know my full story but I was like an atheist for like 12 years and you know, when you when you deconstructed your faith and I thought to myself, I don't really do much prayer, not as much as I'd like to, because I think I, I kind of was kind of a habit that kind of, uh, it's something I walked, when I walked away from God, it's something you quit doing. And I've been recently trying to contemplate, how do I bring prayer back into my life and make it more central in my faith walk and trying to approach it that way? And maybe we can learn something. You know, it's so fascinating to me. So I live in Florida and one of my dreams has always been to go now, they don't call it a temple, but for the lack of a better term, because I don't remember the exact wording, but the Sikh, the Sikh religion, they have these temples, okay? Mm -hmm. And in these temples, what, what's so wonderful and remarkable about their temples is that it's a place for people to come to be fed, no questions asked, and that they feed in India, they feed thousands and thousands of people a day, tens of thousands probably, these are huge temples. Well, they also have one <clears throat> in Tampa. Well, I got, I was, uh, there's this Mexican restaurant I get out to now and then. And one of the, one of the uh, regulars there and I were talking and he told me that he was Sikh. I said, really? I said, wow, that is really cool. Cause he's not wearing a turban or anything, you know, and he's got a short beard. So he, you wouldn't have guessed that he was, um, but he is. And I said, you know, I know there's a Sikh temple in Tampa and I've always wanted to go there to volunteer one day to help, uh, pass out food. I said, would you, uh, are you guys open to allowing an outsider to do that? And he said, oh, that would be great. We'd love to have you. And then he goes to me, he's like, do you, would you, would you, maybe I can even get you a turban. I'm like, yeah, get me a turban. Maybe I can get an MBR turban. What do you think? <laughs> but, <laughs> but, uh, but I thought I want to do that. I want to go to that Sikh temple and I want to be respectful of their faith tradition. I want them to see Jesus in me operational in my life. I want them to see my faith active. And I want to encounter and engage their faith. And I want to do one of the most Christian things we can do. And that is to feed the hungry. And to me, it's we shouldn't limit ourselves just to our little box, our little silo, that you can you can have Christ operational in your life anywhere, any place, anytime as a Christian. And, it, and, and you do need not be intimidated by someone from another faith tradition. What do you guys think? Oh, I... Well. I was just going to say that I agree. Ah, what about you, Greg? Do you agree? Yes, I do. <laughs> uh, I was thinking about how central central feeding the hungry was to uh, to Jesus' message. And when I, I used to live in San Francisco because of my job, and I like to volunteer at the St. Francis Catholic Kitchen. And it was, uh, and some other places too, but uh, made a lot of difference to me. Wow. I think you can learn a lot that way. Yeah, I think so too. You know, it's it's funny. I've been, uh, it's not official yet, but I, I most likely sometime this fall, I will be uh, heading up to Tallahassee, Florida to speak to a group of students at Florida State University as kind of an interfaith thing. It's Mormons, it will be primarily Latter-day Saints, but there also will be myself and maybe another evangelical that will be addressing the group. And I was just informed by the institute director, one of the institute directors who's invited me. And again, it's not official yet, but we're in the we're in the works, is that they're actually building a, a temple uh, in Tallahassee and it's going to be dedicated next year. So I'll finally be able to go into our temple. And I often contemplate, you know, I've had this conversation with John DeLynn on Mormon Stories, was what if we, what like, and again, the church can do what it wants to do. I'm not telling the church use Christ Latter-day Saints what to do. But I often wonder, wouldn't it be neat if somehow if the, the LDS church kind of were to follow the pattern of the early of the early temples in which they were there were public spaces, they would have dances, they would have th they would have schooling, they would have things for the community. And I thought, what if if there was a section in every Mormon temple, Church of Jesus Christ Latter-day Saint temple, that was 
a food shelter or maybe a, a after school program or something where it contributes to the community, that the temple would be viewed as a place, an accessible open space for all. And so it could be an example of how we, the Sikh temple could be an example of how you, you can integrate holy spaces, but also open them to regular folk as well. I often wonder, thinking, considering all the temples are building, if they could do that, it would make such a major impact on so many communities. I think that would be wonderful. Well, I think, let me go pull it back up here now. I think that the Utah Interfaith Forum is a wonderful group. <clears throat> and uh, I just uh, I, uh, I just wanted to let people know that it exists. Check it out on Facebook. It is a private group. And, uh, and just check it out if you're interested in actually having uh, real dialogue. And not only to go there to, uh, more importantly, go there to learn but also go there as a place where you can bring something to the table, something from your faith tradition that you would like to share, maybe something that's beautiful that you want to share with other people from other faith traditions and also be to be able to receive beautiful things from other people's uh, faith traditions as well. We live in a world, guys, where it's a mess. People aren't talking to each other. There's hostility. And many wars and conflicts are a result of people having different religious views and, and, and stuff like that. I always tell people that the, the war between the Protestants and Catholics did not end until the Good Friday Accords in 1999 in Northern Ireland. And so right. we, we have a tradition of that with, even within the Christian tradition. We need to put our we need to do what the uh, anti Nephi Lehi's did, bury our weapons and turn the other cheek. And let's let's go for peace. So I think that the Book of Mormon, even though it's a war document, at the very central of the message, it's about burying one's weapons. I think it's time that we, from our different groups, bury our weapons and embrace the Prince of Peace or the principles of the Prince of Peace. Well, Greg and Diane, I think you guys are wonderful people. I think you have a wonderful group. Uh, was there anything else you wanted to say before we wrap this up? Well, yes, you mentioned a couple of times it's a private group. That doesn't mean exclusive. Okay, it thank you. Mean, it just means that the conversations are not visible to the to the whole world. Okay. But it's visible and uh, you, know, you can just search for Utah Interfaith Forum and join and you'll be welcome it's not uh, it's not a private click is what i'm trying to say yeah thanks for sure yeah that that's good thanks for clarifying and diane was there anything else you wanted to add um i just look forward to more people joining and um i just can't wait to hear the diversity of thought out there Ah, me too. Same here. Well, there's great conversations happening there. Sounds like we got a train barreling on you, Diane. We better. Yes. <laughs> so I want to thank everybody and leave your comments. Uh, check out the group. Uh, let's get them to a thousand members. Okay. They got over 600. Let's get them to a thousand members. It's a very fast growing group on Facebook, Utah Interfaith Forum. Just a reminder don't forget the merch store. Don't forget that we, uh, if you would like to financially support the channel, there'll be links where you can support us on Venmo, PayPal as well as Patreon. And I want to thank all of those of you who are support financially supporting the channel. Also, don't forget to like and subscribe and hit the uh, notification button to be informed when a new episode comes out. And just remember, this is the most important thing, folks. Remember, all the voices of the restoration will be heard here on Mormon Book Reviews.